Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to another episode on Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see about the K6 performance testing with looping. So we're going to use the for loop and there are several scenarios where we might need to run a looping condition to add more items or to improve the complexity of the flow because in some of the cases where them there might be some business requirement that they might ask you to add multiple items to the cart or multiple items to the list so in those scenarios we might need to use the for loop so in this example i'll just start with a basic example and then i will show you how to use the looping and then i'll keep on increasing the complexity so that it will be easy for you to understand how does the for looping in the k6 works so the very first thing is um, here we can see the application where i have and the item so the item is going to be est minus one so i'm adding this to cart and here you can see in the list in the shopping cart i have the item that has been added so when you're doing this particular flow or a similar flow like this and you might need to add items to the list so what i'm going to show now is i'm having a list of code so the first thing is i have a code here where i'm importing the k6 the http and then importing sleep to add enough delays or to add enough thing time between each request and i'm going to run this test with just one user for duration of 10 seconds and here in the url you can see the same item which I'm using in the application now. So the same application which I'm using here. So I'm adding the item to the cart. So now I have this item. So first I'll show you of how to test this particular URL. And then as I told you, I will increase the complexity to the script. So now let me open the partial. I hope it's visible for you. So let's first run this script so we all know to run the script we have to run we have to use the k6 space run and then the file name which is add to cart.js so the file name here is add to cart.js so i'm running this now so this will trigger the execution and since i have added three seconds as delay so for every three seconds, you can see there is an item and there's an iteration that is getting completed. So with that, the test has completed now and here you can see the results. So now, as I told you, we're going to increase the complexity, which is I'm going to add the items here. So in, in the application, if you can see, there are items which is EST1 and then there are items which is EST2. So here you can see the items are getting added. So same way, I have to add the items to the cart. So just I have to change as i have to increase the numbers or i have to bring the numbers in, in the looping manner so this is not something like a too complex thing like where you have to correlate or you have to parameter this is just a very simple a very simple for loop where you're going to add the items that's it so let me go back to the script so here i have the script ready with, with me so what i'm doing here is i'm just adding a for loop and in the for loop, I have the same thing, which is the virtual users is one, the duration is 10 seconds. But here I'm adding a for loop where I'm adding a condition. So we have six items, which starts from EST1. So same here. So from EST1 to EST6. So instead of hard coding it, what I'm doing here is I'm just writing a for loop. So it starts from one and ends at six for every iteration. Let me, in fact, can increase the delay to one second to sorry to two seconds, so that there will be enough delays between each iteration. So let me save this. So I believe you understand. So what I'm doing now is I'm writing a for loop, and inside the for loop, instead of EST minus one, I'm adding a dollar symbol, open braces, I, and then close braces. That's it. So that's the only simple change which I made, except that everything is same, but adding a for loop before that. So the file name is for loop.js so let's go back to the partial clear this window and then let's run this file so the file name is for loop.js started the iteration and here you can see for every few seconds 
think there is some mistake. Let me just try to close it. So let me bring it back to one, save it again. Then I'm going back to this script. Let's run this script again. Before that, let me clear this screen. For loop. And now here, the execution has completed. So I have added two items to the list. So in case if you find or if you want to confirm that whether the items has been added to the list. So I have added a next level of complexity where I will print the results so that we can confirm that everything is working fine on the items are added to the cart. So we will see that now. Okay, so let's go back to the code here. And here in the code, the function starts, which means if you see one, the complete is one, which means six iterations has been completed. And if you see the complete has been two, which means two iterations has been completed. So the complete which shows here is the number of iterations. So I have added a little more complexity. So in the for loop, you can see I have added the same line and then the for loop response, what I did is I'm getting the response and I'm saving it in a file and I have printed it so that we can see the items that has been added to the cart. So now let's execute it. So the file name is for loop underscore response.js. So let me go back to the script. I believe you can see this text now. So let me run the for loop response.js. When I start executing, so here you can see the item EST hyphen one has added to the cart and the status code is 200, which means it's a successful request. So the same way I have added all the six items in the first iteration and I have added the next six items in the second iteration. So with that, all the items, which is all the six items has been added twice to the list. So this is some way where you can improvise your code and you can even add this kind of assertions or you can even print the response. So this you can use for debugging and not during the load test. So this is another way where you can use in a better way to debug so that you don't miss anything when you're running your test. So I believe this video would be very useful to you. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye bye from Asin Chamugam and Little Slav.